Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. I am Madam Onu Hidayawan Anwar. So this video, I will continuing explaining on the DNA synthesis on how is actually the DNA is being replicated by the process what we call as a DNA replication. Okay, so for the for the lesson learning outcomes, um, in this video we are going to focus on the third lesson outcomes where in the end of this video, you must be able to explain the semi-conservative of DNA replication. Alright, so now let's begin with the definition of the DNA replication. So what is the DNA replication? This is a process of copying the old DNA to have a new DNA. So why is this process is needed? As you know that basically our cells are going to have uh, cell divisions for the sake of the cell repairing or for the growth examples and when the, your cells is divided obviously the DNA also must be replicated so that the new cells will have the similar DNA molecules all right so now we are going to uh, learn in details on how the DNA is going to be replicated all right, so DNA replication can be completed in a very simple three steps where it begins with initiation step and proceed with elongation step and last one is the termination step. Okay, so before we go into details for the DNA replication, we must first know the location of uh, the DNA replication that should occur in the eukaryotic cells. So basically, the DNA replication will occur in the nucleus where we can find the DNA molecules inside the nucleus. Okay, so the replication of DNA molecule will begin at the special site called the origin of the replication. Um, on this site, basically, uh, the two DNA strands are separated and open up to form a bubble. The eukaryotic chromosomes may have hundreds or even thousands of origin of the replications. And at the end of the each replication bubble, you will find a replication fork. Okay, the replication fork is a Y-shaped region where the parental strands are, of DNA are being unwind and the due DNA strands are elongating. The replication proceeds in both directions until the entire molecule is copied. Okay, so now let's start the DNA replication process by the step one, what we call as the initiation. Okay, I will introduce the key player in the DNA replication process. Mainly, these key players are enzymes. There are three enzymes involved in the initiation process that are helicase, single-strand binding proteins, and topoisomerase. For the helicase, this is the enzyme that is used to untwisting the double helix at the replication fork. It is being done by breaking the hydrogen bonds between the complementary bases in the middle region of the DNA strands. Now, the single strand binding proteins will be used to hold the separated DNA strands in place so that it can stabilize the single strand of DNA for the re DNA replication to replicate. The third one is topoisomerase where it is used to prevent the overwinding ahead of the replication fork. Based on this picture, you can see during the initiation, your double strand of DNA is being untwisted or being unzipped by the enzyme helicase. This single strand of DNA is being stabilized by single strand binding proteins. And the topoisomerase is used to prevent the overwinding at the replication fork.
Okay, so after the double strands of DNA has been separated, now it can continue to make a new copies of itself. The first main idea is that both of the DNA strand act as a template for replication. It means that the synthesis of new strands will occur on both strands of the DNA. Okay, so the process of synthesizing new DNA strand is the main event that occur on the second step of the replication, which is elongation. Okay, so elongation by its name means we are trying to elongate or produce a new growing strand of DNA using the parental DNA template. Okay, so the second key point is that the synthesis of DNA strand are always from 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Okay, because of these rules, we are going to form two different types of newly synthesis strand called leading strand and lagging strand. This one I will explain further on the next slide. Okay, so for the elongation, uh, as usual, we are going to consider the enzymes involved in this process for the elongation is going to have two enzymes involved which are the first one is primase the second one is DNA polymerase all right so the process of elongation elongating the new strand is obviously done by DNA polymerase because it's going to produce a DNA strand but the DNA polymerase cannot initiate new strand synthesis because it only can add new nucleotide at the 3' end of an existing strand, which is the growing strand. Thus, all the new synthesized polynucleotide strands must be initiated by specialized RNA polymerase called primase. Alright, so this primase will actually act as the initiator by um, synthesizing a short strand of RNA polymer complementary to the DNA strand. So, uh, in, a, in a simpler words, the primase will mix the RNA primer and add on the beginning of the process of the elongations. Okay, so what is RNA primer? It is a basically a short strand of RNA, about 10 nucleotides, and is going to use to begin the replication, uh, where it is a start point of DNA replication, and followed by DNA polymerase that going to add up uh, DNA nucleotide on the 3' prime end of a primer. Uh, to continue the uh, elongation. Alright, so for the elongation, there are two possible strands that are going to be produced as the new, as the newly synthesized strand are growing towards the replication fork. This one will form the leading strand. Okay, so on the other hand, on, on the other template strand, the new growing strands will produce away from the replication fork because we uh, because remember we must follow uh, the rules that uh, the growing strand is always be formed from the five prime to three prime. So because of this, uh, it's going to produce the lagging strand. On this lagging strand, uh, we are not going to synthesize it continuously. So it means that it's going to have a fragments and these fragments or segments of the legging strands are called Okazaki fragments. Okay, so let's consider uh, a parental DNA strands that need to be replicated. Okay, so this one is a parental DNA strand that has been unzipped or separated by helicase enzymes. So you can see here the replication fork in the Y shape of uh, DNA strand. Okay, so let's um, take a look one by one um, of your parental DNA strands because of both of the parental DNA strands will act as a template and the replications will occur on both strands. Okay, so first let us consider the um, five prime to three prime strands here. Okay, so on this strand, 
uh, the formations of the newly synthesized strands are always from 5 prime to 3 prime and you will build up the newly strand in this direction so you can add the dna nucleotide continuously from 5 prime to 3 prime towards the replication fork so it does not have any obstacles and uh, these strand formations is continuously and this one is called the leading strand okay so Let's take a look at the other strands on the 3' prime to 5' prime strand. Okay, um, still the rules are uh, similar where the newly formed DNA strand it will be formed at 5' prime to 3' prime direction. So here the 5' prime to 3' prime direction is going to be on opposite way on opposite direction with the helicase all right it means that this strand will growing away from the replication fork uh, this strand cannot be synthesized continuously so it can be synthesized by segments when the helicase uh, has unzipped the parental strand okay so it will synthesize from 5 prime to 3 prime. When the helicase uh, unzip more, the second segment uh, can be synthesized by adding the primer and elongate by adding the DNA nucleotide on the 3 prime end of the primer. So it continue when uh, uh, it continue for the third segment when the helicase unzip more, it repeats the same steps involving the primase and the DNA polymerase tree. Okay, so uh, the segments that were formed is called the Okazaki fragments. And these strands that is formed by these manners is called lagging strand. Okay, so this is the another versions of um, picture showing the formations of leading and lagging strand. Okay, so for the first part, for the le uh, leading strand, uh, we are considering the DNA uh, parental strands of five to five prime to three prime, and uh, the formation of the newly synthesis is um, towards the replication fork are continuously formed. Okay, so it is formed after the RNA primer is made and the DNA polymerase 3 will start to synthesize the leading strand. And the leading strand is elongated continuously in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction as the fork progresses. Okay, so you can see the DNA polymerase uh, 3 will add up the DNA nucleotide on the 3' prime end of the primer. Okay, so let's see for the second uh, strand formation, what is called by lagging strand. So here, we are uh, considering the other strand of your DNA from uh, 3 prime to 5 prime end. Okay, so uh, because of the um, formations of the strands is in the opposite direction with the uh, helicase direction towards the uh, replication fork so it, uh, the, for the newly formed the newly synthesized strands must be uh, done as in segments okay so at first um, as usual the primase will initiate by synthesizing the RNA primer on the first segment and the DNA polymerase 3 will add the DNA nucleotide to the primer forming the Okazaki fragment 1 Okay, and after reaching the next primer, DNA polymerase will detach. Okay, this means uh, because of uh, it reach um, to the end to the end of the uh, replication progress. Okay, so uh, 
fragments too so as the helicase uh, is moved towards the replication fork uh, the fragment the fragments too uh, is primed okay so it means that the primase will comes again and synthesize the rna primer and then uh, the dna polymers uh, uh, polymerase uh, 3 at the DNA nucleotides and it detach when it reaches the fragment 1 primer okay uh, so it repeats again for the segment uh, uh, fragment number uh, 3 and so on okay so it means that for these formations of the lagging strand uh, we use several primates to initiate the um, uh, synthesizing the new fragments uh, because of these formations are away from the replication fork okay so in the end of the process basically uh, this will be uh, facilitated by dna ligase that i will continue on the termination part where the dna ligase will form a bond between the newest dna uh, and the uh, DNA fragments, the older one. Okay, so to join together uh, the fragments so they can have the continuous um, DNA strands all together in the end of the process. Okay, so now eventually the leading strand of one replication bubble uh, reaches the lagging strand of another bubble. Okay, so as well as the lagging strand will reach the fifth, uh, the five prime end of the previous Okazaki fragments in the same bubble. Okay, so this is the cue to terminate the process of replication. So this is the third step of DNA replication, what we call as the termination. Alright, so during the termination, termination stage, once all the template nucleotides have been replicated, the replication process is not yet over because of the RNA primers need to be replaced with DNA nucleotide and the gap in the sugar phosphate backbone need to be connected. So this is done by um, enzymes two enzymes what we call as the dna polymerase one which is used to replace the, the rna primer uh, by adding the complementary dna nucleotide in the leading and lagging strand but still the okazaki fragments are still have the gap between the strand okay so for the last one uh, finally to um, polish the newly synthesized strand is that the DNA ligase will facilitate the joining of the Okazaki fragments together and also will join between the old strand with the newly synthesized strand. Okay, so that is the function of DNA ligase. Alright, so as in the termination stage also, there is a process that is called a, a proofread where um, during the uh, replication process, uh, at the end of the replication process, we must double check either uh, they are correctly done or not. Okay, so it is done by uh, DNA polymerase 1 where uh, this enzyme will double check on the sequence of the new strand to make sure that the nucleotides are packed correctly if uh, there is a, a mismatch detect, detected so it will be repaired. So um, because of the DNA can be damaged by exposure to harmful chemicals or physical agents such as cigarette smokes and x-rays so this also can undergo spontaneous changes done by the dna polymerase one okay and also um, comes in the nucleus okay so the nucleus is the enzyme that will cut the damaged dna strand okay so it used as the biological scissors okay so it will cut the dna uh, the damaged DNA strand at two point and the damaged sections is removed. Okay, so once cut, uh, it, it, uh, we are going to paste a new uh, correct, uh, correct uh, nucleotide uh, that is done by DNA polymerase 1. Okay, so it will repair by filling in the missing nucleotides. Okay, finally, the DNA ligase will seal the free end 
Okay, so this is a function of the ligase. It will join the segments. Okay, so it will seal the free end of the new DNA to the old DNA and making the strand complete. Okay, so for the summary steps of the DNA replication as a whole, okay, so this one, uh, we are going to focus on the, the enzymes that is used for the DNA replication. There are several. Okay, so we are going to start with the helicase, uh, which functions to unwind or separating the parental strands to form a replication fork at the origin of the replication. And this is done by... Uh, bidirectionally so it can form a bubble right so for the step two uh, this one is being done by a single strand binding protein okay to stabilize the unwound parental strand while uh, the topo isomerase is used to prevent from overwinding okay so basically this part is uh, the enzyme that's involved in the initiation stage okay so for the uh, step two on the elongation, uh, the enzymes that involve will uh, begin with primase, where primase will add the RNA nucleotides, uh, also known as the primers. Okay, so complementary to the DNA template strands to begin the synthesizing of the DNA strand. And uh, for the elongation, uh, will be um, facilitated by DNA polymerase three. Uh, that will form a leading strand and also a lagging strand. Okay, so remember for the leading strand, uh, it formed because of um, the DNA polymerase uh, is going to add up the DNA nucleotides on three prime end of new growing strand towards the replication fork. Okay, so for the lagging strand, uh, this enzyme will add the nucleotide on the three prime end of the new a new growing strand away from the replication fork so that it will form the okazaki fragments all right so uh, for the final step which is the termination uh, two enzymes involved which are the dna polymerase one uh, this dna polymerase one is used to remove or deleting uh, or repairing um, uh, any mismatch and basically removing the RNA primers and replacing uh, the strands with the nucleotide's DNA. Right. So last but not least is the DNA ligase that is used to join the sugar phosphate backbones at the each nick site, um, the gap site of the Okazaki fragments and also in the leading strand. Okay, and again, as a wrap up, uh, these are the enzymes that involve in the DNA replication. Okay, so we have um, eight enzymes, uh, including the enzymes that it's used for the proof read uh, process in the termination stage. Okay, so the first one is helicase, uh, which is uh, functions in unwind or separate the double strand at the replication fork. And it, it is being um, uh, stabilized by, uh, it is being stabilized uh, the single strand by the single strand binding protein and also uh, helped by topo isomerase to prevent the overwinding of the uh, strand, strand ahead, the replication fork. Okay, uh, and also we have the primase that will build up the RNA primer to initiate the elongation. And we have the DNA polymerase 3, which is a function in adding a new nucleotide at the free 3 prime end of the growing strand or um, RNA primer. Okay, so we also have the DNA polymerase 1 that is um, functionally used to remove the primer and replacing the new nucleotide uh, or filling the gap uh, for repairing process. Okay, so the last one is, uh, no, the second last one is the DNA ligase uh, that is used to join and connect the sugar phosphate uh, backbones of the strands. And last but not least is the nuclease, which uh, is used for the proofread uh, process in the termination, uh, which this, is, uh, uh, this enzyme acts as the biological scissors. They use to cut the damaged DNA 
uh, strength at two points and damage sections is going to be removed so that's all uh, for that's all the important notes on the DNA replication it is a very easy it's just that you need to uh, go through one by one and inshallah everything is going to be fine okay so uh, that's all thank you and see you again